Welcome to the Studio African Utility Week. I'm Rose Bundock and I'm joined now by Harold Hayes, Hi. Chief Technology Officer for Africa at Landis and Gear. Yes. Thanks for your time, Harold. Thank you. Um, you have exciting news, I believe, at African Utility Week. You have a new product that you're launching. Yes, last year we spoke about having um, a new G3 PLC smart meter, a prepayment meter with all the smart functionality. So yes, that is on our stand, it's there, it's working. So uh, yeah, we're very proud of making that achievement. Um, production probably July, so yes, okay. it's good. And are you rolling that out in some pilots? So have you got some uh, We've. Uh, everybody wants a pilot. And as we spoke about again last year, that yeah. the problem with the pilot is you can go to any smart meter solution and look at it, it works. Mm. So, uh, of course, we've got a small pilot where we're testing the communication, but um, we will, we've will we already tendered for large tenders and uh, the meter will be going straight to market without pilots. Yeah. Which countries do you think will, will be the first to like do large scale rollouts? Well, in the last year, Kenya has been out on tender for smart metering. Zimbabwe, uh, they've also got a, big, a large smart metering tender that's out. Um, I believe Nigeria will follow, but they need to find the funding. Yeah. Um, so those are the three that I believe will come to market soon. And you mentioned them um, that it's using the same communication standard. Do you think that will make that will be a big game changer? Well, I walked around the walked around the show today, and there's a lot of people using radio, um, and we've chose to use PLC. Uh, we've tested radio before, and uh, the penetration is is an issue with brick walls. So if you go to America. There's a lot of radio implemented, but most people build with wood. Uh, so the, the radio here would be interesting to see how the people are going to overcome the challenges with repeaters. But using G3 communication, multi-master, that would be the right way to go, and that's what we've chosen. And yes, the meter will talk to many other devices. So has this um, new meter been specifically developed for Africa? Um, in terms of the prepaid, the having both functions prepaid as well as time of use, being a, a credit meter, being a revenue collection meter, yes, that's unique. Where other parts of the world, other parts of Landis and Gear have had a, a smart meter, mm. but a virtual prepayment. In this case, we want prepayment in the meter. So you must be able to enter tokens in the meter as well as have a back office prepayment. So this would cater for both. So there's obviously benefits for the utility there in terms of revenue collection. What about the benefits for the, the consumer? Is there any kind of well, tariff incentives or? Time of use has been spoken about a lot. Yeah. Um, and we're seeing in South Africa where people are blackouts and this, that. So there, there would be a benefit for the consumer because the meter has an option of load limit. Mm. So it can, instead of blacking the area out, we can send a command to the meter saying, everyone's only got 10 amps as an example and then everyone will be load limited based on their consumption. If they misbehave, they will switch off, but not the whole neighborhood. So that would be a, a, a benefit to the end consumer. Because obviously City Power have their, their pilot going on with yep. load limiting at the moment. Yes, but uh, the City Power, what I understand of the City Power one is that they um, have individual meters in every house with a cell phone in the meter, if you want to call it that, which then it's difficult to send a command to all the meters in a specific area because you're sending it to each individual cell phone. Where ours is network based, so you would send it to one data concentrator and that would then have that transformer under control, if you want to call it that, rather than individual meters. Okay. Uh, and you mentioned Nigeria as a market. When do you think that will likely sort of come online? Well, but when they when they privatized, so 50% of the utility was sold off to a private industry. Now they're having the debate about who's spending money to invest in a new market. Once that debate is gone, then of course there's a massive meter replacement that's required. So uh, it's, as soon as who's, when the funding becomes available, yeah, we've got uh, this power, en power energy that's here from the US, where they want to fund Africa. Obama's been here to talk about that. So if those projects come to the fore and the funding becomes available, Yes, then it will be massive and they need to replace meters. So obviously you're, you're you know, based in South Africa, a lot of your business is in South Africa. In terms of the country's current sort of electricity shortage crisis, yep. um, do you think smart meters could help with that? Do as, they? A, 
as I said, it, it, it would definitely help because customer awareness is more. Because the customer will to see the energy on the internet, they will see the benefit of installing a solo geyser and a this that, they will see it directly on their meters. So the in-home displays are critical in terms of informing the customer. Where today people buy, pay for their bill, if the bill is in excessive, they don't know what they did wrong in that month uh, to cause the excessive bill or vice versa. But now having a meter with in-home display, they would have, and having the information every half an hour snapshot, they've gone on the internet and see, um, okay, what happened during this week? Um, and they would understand why they did it. You mentioned that new, the new uh, smart prepay meter, it can accept um, solar power, can kind of yep. so give information on that. Do you see that as a big trend happening in South Africa? Will that? Oh, it's interesting, I was in Germany, I was in Switzerland the week before last. We spoke about um, energy going back onto the grid. Um, I understand today Germany can push back 41 gigawatt back on the grid. Mm. That's nearly as much as what we produce. So we're seeing solar coming on board and we need to measure it. We need to control what's com coming back onto the grid. And this meter would be able to do that. So we'd be able to send a signal to the customers saying we don't want your energy right now, we have excess. Mm -hmm. So we'd be able to switch meters on, off remotely and actually monitor what's coming back onto the grid before we get to the same situation where it is in Germany. But, I mean, obviously, yeah, the meter is very useful as that sensor, as the kind of yep. point between, but is, will the government's kind of support that? Will ESCOM, you know, welcome that uh, prosumer kind of approach? Well, it, uh, from a government point of view, they do do that. There is the incentive that they, I think currently there's a tender out from ESCOM in terms of how you would put energy back on the grid and you can submit a tender according to that. Uh, some of the utilities, what I've heard is they will pay the customer back for what they buy electricity. So some utilities make their own decision in that light and others haven't, haven't made the decision. But yes, there will be some incentive to people for installing uh, their own solar power. And when do you see that possibly happening? I mean, obviously Germany started years ago to get to this point, but is this something South Africa needs to do sort of straight away? Solar is happening. People yeah. are installing. People are, are so-called going off the grid. That, that is happening. Now, one of these days they're going to say, well, I want some more money back for my installation. Um, so, yes, many people are installing solar. Um, when, the, when the utilities will pay them back money, that part I'm not sure. Mm. That's got to be legislated. And obviously in the kind of wider industry, there's some game changers with home energy storage batteries coming out of the US. Mm. Um, do you think that would be a big shift in, in the African market to actually be able to store that solar energy overnight and yeah, so as, as Landis and Gear is part of Toshiba, we've actually developed uh, some serious batteries for that purpose mm. on, on, a, on a medium voltage level. So we can actually store a little neighborhood. So when we have these outages, we can actually have the outage and run that area from batteries. So yes, uh, battery storage is, is going to be the, the talk of the day because that's what's missing and that's the expensive part. Yeah. Yeah. So do, obviously, yeah, you have Toshiba as your parent company. Yes, and they have, they have a microgrid where they you actually can put a container full of batteries on the side and uh, you can say, right, switch that area off. And for that period of time, the area will be managed from the supply that was stored in the batteries. And does Tosh Toshiba view Africa as a big sort of microgrid market? Are they yes, making they, sort of headway? Yes, they're actually starting to appoint people in, in Africa, in okay. the offices to, to grow into the Africa market. Yeah. And any particular countries in mind that well, uh, everyone always starts in South Africa yeah. as a stepping ground. Yeah. So they have appointed people for already. So we expect them to move into Africa soon. Yeah. And in terms of um, utilities being receptive to that kind of technology, is there still a long way to go in convincing people that... Uh, the biggest problem, the same as with smart, it's where does the money come from? Yeah. So yes, they, were, they, wanted, they want this off-grid pilots, they want power off the grid uh, for these small villages and to, to run without being actually connected to the grid, but it's where do you find the money to finance that? That's uh, in Africa. There's the shortage of power, but someone needs to invest. Mm. And there's always that discussion. It takes two years for the money to come. Okay. Are you seeing that with the pilots you've done that it's quite hard to actually fund them to get them off the ground? Or yeah. Um, so it's, it's a, there's a lot of good talk. There's a lot of positive talk. Lots of people visiting the stand, excited about the meter, but. Where's the money to change the technology to protect the revenue in the future? And uh, that, that's where the, 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 there's a disconnect. Yeah. 
Um, you're speaking on the programme this week, the conference programme. Yep. Uh, can you give us a couple of little insights into what you'll be talking about? Um, new, new, uh, new technologies in metering. Okay. Uh, and there, the, the message that I typically want to give there is that the utilities need to book their space because everyone is wanting communication to the meters, but houses are getting smarter. So now you can walk in your house, you have full home automation, everything is happening at home and more and more Wi-Fi connections are happening everywhere and the utility needs to book their space for communication mm. because if the utility blocks the communication of a household, that there's going to be an issue. It's more than likely the household is going to win the battle and switch the utilities equipment off. So the utility needs to focus on keeping the, the communication channels that have been open for them, the frequencies that have been mm. open for them, they need to keep them and uh, make sure that no one is communicating with all these new smart devices in that space. Okay, but making sure the meter is future-proof so that it can connect with so these it other... It doesn't interfere with something else because if if the utility uses Sendelec A-band, for example, uh, that is dedicated to the utility. Um, and if they go to the higher bands, that then is for co consumers. So some of the people are using the high bands uh, for house automation, factory automation. Um, leave them alone and don't let anyone play in the Sendelec A-band space mm. so that they can have their communication secure. And do you see evidence of you know, utilities kind of lobbying for that, or is it not? No, at the, this point, sort of you know, everyone is saying every, most people are using the free bands, so that's going to run out of space. If you're looking today, opening and closing your car, that's a free radio band. Um, all the technologies running around here, the Zigbee's and this, that using 2.4 gigahertz, so that's going to start running out of space. You're going to have to allocate new frequencies, um, and that's where the challenge is going to come. Too many people will be using uh, free space and mm. not buying licenses. Okay. Thank you, Harold. Thanks Thank for your you. time and your insights. Thank you. Um, I'm Rose Bundock at African Utility Week Studio. Thanks for joining us.